So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, so we are uh, law students at Kent uh, and the purpose of this session is just to give you guys a bit of a chance to ask us any questions that you want um, about, you know, life as a law student at Kent, life just as a university student. So um, if you do have any questions for us, pop them in the chat um, and we'll try and pick up on them as we go along. Um, we've also received some of your questions that you've already sent through, so we will be happy to start off answering some of those as well. Um, but I suppose to kick it off, um, I think obviously an introduction is needed. So um, some of you may have seen me from Instagram Lives that I've done. My name is Henna. I am a second year law student. I'm doing a straight law degree um, and I'm an ambassador. So I look forward to talking and answering your questions today. Cool. Uh, hope you guys are doing all right. Uh, my name's Akash. I'm a second year law student. I'm also an ambassador and I'm from Essex. Rahini, do you want to go first? <laughs> um, hi guys, I'm Rahini. I'm a final year law student, so um, and also an ambassador. And I'm Neha, I'm a third year law student, uh, graduating soon, and I study straight law and I'm a student ambassador as well. Mm. So for those of you that have just joined in, we've just done a brief introduction. If you want, uh, please send through your questions in the chat and we'll pick them up as we go along and answer those for you. Um, I suppose maybe guys, we could start off with um, maybe just a general question, maybe like what, what's Canterbury like um, to, give, to give the guys a bit of an idea about what we found our experience to be. Um, so I lived on campus in first year and then um, lived off campus for two years, so in Canterbury, and um, it's a really lovely place to go to university, I think we'll all agree on that. It's, um, I think the campus is really nice and also being the location of it because you're quite close to the train station, you can easily get to city centre and stuff. So I think accessibility wise, it's really good. And also there's lots to do. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to add on to that. Yeah, I was going to add on um, a bit about the university specifically as well. Um, thankfully, our campus is actually really diverse. So we've got people from, you know, coming from all over the world, different cultures, different ethnicities. So it's really nice. Um, you have a, like a really wide mixture of friends, everyone's super friendly and um, outside of campus as well, there's so much to do, you know, places to eat, cinema, um, places to go out. So it's, it's quite good that everything's nearby. So you get a good balance of your study life and then obviously socializing with friends and stuff. Akash, did you have anything to add? Um, yeah, um, I think it's uh, adding on to what you guys are saying. Canterbury is quite different from where, where I come from, from like, as in like Romford. It's just, um, it's definitely more green. There's a lot more like outdoor stuff to do. There's always people cycling up and down Elliot Hill. And um, it's just a nice little snippet of history I found, like in Canterbury, seeing the cathedral, the cobbled streets and everything like that. So yeah, it's just really nice vibes from there. Okay, so I suppose we've got some questions that have come through. We'll just start off from the top of the list. Uh, so we've got Katie that's asked, have any of you worked whilst doing a law degree? If so, how have you found it with time management, etc.? Yeah, um, I definitely have maybe worked a little bit too much during my <laughs> law degree. Um, it varied like year by year, um, but I've always had, I've always been working part time since uh, GCSC so for me it wasn't too different or difficult for me I just make sure obviously I prioritized my studies always that always came first um, so obviously during the week I would study I'd make sure I stay in the library until I you know get my stuff done and then stay on top of my work and then when it came to the weekend I would leave maybe like I would have a Saturday job so I'd leave Saturday to work so I was tutoring for a while um, and during my second year, I kind of overdid it. I had three jobs while doing that. So I wouldn't suggest doing that, but um, it depends on your circumstances, obviously. But yeah, so I would leave the weekend to do work and then I would suggest always leave at least one day, one to two days for you to rest and see your family and friends because you really need that balance. But it's definitely doable. 
and um, you can get support from the university as well. You can, for example, I worked on campus, which helped a lot. So as a student ambassador, we get paid to do this. So that was a job, but I was already on campus. So it was helpful. I didn't have to travel far or anything like that. So there's loads of different opportunities um, that you can do while studying, really. Yeah, i would just add on to that. I also, as alongside being an ambassador, I also worked in the university library. So that was another job on campus. And I think the hours are really flexible um, because they know that we're students. And so you kind of get to pick which hours for a lot of the jobs on campus and even off campus as well. I think because Canterbury is quite a university town, there are lots of students. Um, I feel like the employers are more aware that you're students and you may not always be in Canterbury for the whole year um, if you go back home and stuff. So I think there are lots of um, opportunities for work on and off campus and it's very manageable as long as, as Nia said, you balance your time well. Yeah, just to re-emphasize that, I found that uh, jobs on campus as opposed to off campus really understanding that you are a student and it's that ability to be flexible with your hours and work it around your studying and your timetable and everything that was really good about uh, jobs on campus so if you were thinking about getting a job during studying which of course you don't have to but if you did want to then I would highly recommend doing an on-campus job. Oh, there's a question for Neha, which is that, did you still have time during first year in particular to socialise and meet new friends? Yeah, I think um, first year is the year that I had the most time to socialise and meet new friends. First year, you've, there's a lot less pressure than your second and third year. Um, so, and everyone's new, so everyone's in the same boat as you. Um, everyone's eager to make new friends, you know, meet new people. Um, but... I definitely had um, enough time to to do that and to go out and you know explore the area and stuff like that. It's like I said, it's about balancing your time and it's also about what you can handle. So I, I do feel like it's specific um, to every individual. But for me, I was able to handle it and I was able to juggle that. But if I didn't and I felt like my university experience was kind of getting taken away from me, I maybe would have, you know, done less hours and stuff like that. But again, it all it uh, depends on your circumstances but there's so much to do on campus and like we said work on campus that you can you can have best of both worlds really um okay uh the next question i suppose we'll just work down the list i think that's probably the fairest way to do it um so we've got a question from jade uh did you know what area of law you wanted to uh, specify in before you started your degree Should I start yeah. off? Yeah, start. <laughs> um, well, well, Jade, um, I actually didn't really know what I wanted to do. It came to kind of choosing my A-levels. I don't know about you guys, but um, I finally decided that law was going to be one of my A-levels. Um, and at that point in time, I kind of just thought, oh, I want to be a lawyer. I didn't know anything about areas of law. And I think like most people, kind of criminal law and like crime and stuff kind of sounds really interesting to you. But obviously when you come and actually start your degree, you get sort of exposed to so many different modules that you didn't even know existed. So many different types of law um, and your perspective kind of changes a little bit. So to kind of put a simple answer, I didn't know what kind of area I wanted to go into, um, but you're kind of the modules you have kind of guide you into that as you're doing your degree so that's my experience with that yeah i think for me as well i didn't really know exactly what i wanted to go into but um because of the kind of core modules that you have to do so all the um parts of law that you have to study um to do your law degree we um like criminal law contract law land law things like that i think because there's such a um widespread that we have to do um, it helps you kind of narrow down which area you might be interested in and then you do get a lot of choice in your third year as to what you might want to you can try out lots of different things to figure out what you want to do so I think I did that for one in third year because I had quite a lot of very different subjects to kind of figure out what I want to do so um, yeah I think yeah. change um, probably change your opinion over time yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I feel like my area of 
uh, where I want to go into has changed every single year um, just because we're exposed to new subjects like you said new modules and like um, we said before some areas you're like oh my god I didn't even know this was a thing um, and then you study it and you're like wow so I started off really wanting to go into criminal law and being a criminal law barrister um, that was kind of where my head was and I was like no one's going to change my mind you know I definitely this is where I'm supposed to what I'm supposed to do and then with the time going on and you hear obviously we have a lot of different talks at university a lot a lot of different lecturers who are sometimes so, uh, solicitors and barristers themselves and they give a lot of advice and their their expertise on it so you learn a lot and then now I've completely changed and I don't want to be a barrister anymore I want to be a solicitor and you know I've studied stuff like medical negligence and um you know different areas where I'm like oh, this is more suited to me so um don't be worried if you don't know 100 percent where you want to go at the moment um it's quite rare if you do and yeah you'll just learn along the way and be exposed to new areas um should we do the next question um so the next question on the list is how many hours a week uh do you have of seminars lectures tutorials uh and so on in your first year um well I can't remember exactly about first year, but I'm pretty sure it's similar to what I had last year, second year. And um, that was around 12 hours a week. But I mean, that's subject to change with timetables. But because the great thing about first year is the fact that we're all doing core modules, people, especially doing everyone doing the straight law degree, will have the exact same amount of hours and just um, obviously in different orders. So, um, and I'd say 12, or like 10 to 12 hours is, is fairly manageable to work around, especially with the timetable not being so regimented through like work or like how school was like 8.30 to 3. The fact that at university, you can have a 9 a.m. one day and then another day you won't start until what I remember last year. I didn't start. I only had one fit on the Monday and it started at 5 to 6. So it's really flexible and it... Um, it changes but um yeah it it depends on what module you're doing each term but uh yeah i don't know rohini and neha did you like did your experience of third year because obviously me and akash haven't had experienced third year yet but has was your experience any different did you have kind of more or less hours um i think for third year compared to second year i feel like mine lessened a little bit um second year is I would say out of all three years the most intense um for me it was anyways um but it felt like it was a lot less um a lot of it is obviously down to your own independent study as well and your own independent research so contact hours may be um like I said like 12 hours or something but you are obviously required to kind of go back and read over your notes and prepare for seminars as well so that adds on some extra time but um, it definitely does vary year by year and also by module as well. Yeah, I think for me, I had around eight to nine hours um, in third year. So even though the hours went down, there was a lot more to do because I think assessments as well, balancing working those out. Because I think one really good thing about first year as well is that because everyone is pretty much doing the same subjects for the whole year, um, all of the different subjects kind of coordinate when you have to hand in assessments so and they help you through it a lot so I think it is um, even though 12 hours might seem like a lot initially um, they do help you a lot along the way so you don't feel like you're kind of left to fend for yourself doing this whole new subject for some of you so yeah um Right, so hi guys. Uh, is studying really tough? And what curriculum did you guys do in high school? Thank you. Um, I think it depends on, the, on part of the first question. Really, it obviously changes to what type of person you are because studying, it depends on how you do it. There's like sort of the regurgitating of information that you've been taught or some other people prefer to study by doing past papers and answering questions in a more practical way, even just discussing um, stuff with their uh, seminar leaders. 
Um, I'd say because well, we're all choosing to do law as a degree, you have that sort of like interest embedded in you into the actual content. And despite it being core modules and some modules being better than others in personal, depending on what you like believe, I feel like um, just going over that content and seeing sort of the, the lecturers and the seminar leaders' enthusiasm for it personally, it's sort of embeds that enthusiasm into you so I'd say it's it's definitely um you, you can't really go and do it like there's no easy option to do it like you have to do the reading for the seminars and you have to learn the content but I find the more you do it the, the sort of easier it becomes especially like how I found going into second year and um yeah so it's there are hard aspects to it but as long as you have that sort of drive to reach your end point then it sort of drives you on to do it if you get me and um i think the second part to that question was what subjects we did in high school or maybe no, college what yeah. curriculum did you do in high school um well um in college in uk which i did um, I did A levels and I did government and politics, world history, and English literature. I also did a law AS, but I dropped that in first year because I, will, I often hear a lot of um, universities saying that you don't really need, you don't have to necessarily have that background knowledge of law from A level because universities sort of like to reteach you in their own way about the content and. Um, so I never felt like I was behind or anything by not doing law as an A2. But um, yeah, those were the subjects I did as A-level. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't do law at, um, during A-levels as well. My school didn't offer that. But I don't feel like I was put at any disadvantage from that either because I know I do know some students who, who were in my year who did law at A-level and it wasn't really anything it wasn't really in that much in depth anyway so you do get taught from scratch um, during university so that was fine but I feel like study wise studying is always going to be somewhat tough um, and it does change as you go along but you do you get older obviously I mean as we started our degree at 18 I'm now finishing at 21 you you know you mature your your life changes as you go on and you start to learn your different ways of studying and what works best for you. So how I study during my A-levels is different to how I study during my third year. You kind of learn different techniques and pick up different tricks that work for you. Um, so the more you kind of work at it, the easier it gets a little bit. Um, and like, like I said, it gets, you just get more used to it really. You kind of accept, okay, I've got this reading to do. It might be really long, but, you know, I know I can just sit there, print it off, get with my highlighter and then, you know, just get through it. So um, it does depend. I wouldn't I wouldn't lie to you and say it's easy or walk in the park. It's definitely not. I've had some late nights of studying mm. and long hours in the library, but that's just the commitment that you obviously are making and you're doing a degree at the end of the day. So it won't be too easy. Um, OK, so next question is. What was it like finding your house for second and third year? Was there a good amount of support? Um, for me, um, yeah, it wasn't too difficult. I ended up living with people I lived with in first year. Um, and on the university campus, the Kent Union, the student union, um, do run a service to kind of help you find housing. I think they hold a housing fair on campus in January as well um, but if you want to like look for a house before then then and they'll kind of help you find the information find the right websites to look at and things like that so um, yeah you can do it all through the university or on your own and I think one really useful service which they had is when you get your tenancy agreement for um, your house that you're staying in for second or third year the university can check over that for you so um, just to make sure because obviously for most of you you won't have really dealt with housing and that kind of stuff before so I think it's the university does help you a lot um, if you go out and reach out to them. 
I just wanted to add to that actually as well. Um, as well as um, I don't know about everyone on like everyone here on the call, but um, I yeah for second and third year I'm planning on staying in private housing. I mean I, I am currently anyway, but um, the university actually offer as well to support you if you do decide to stay on campus again. Um, so it's not just a oh you can stay for first year and then like that's it you're not allowed to stay on campus ever again. Um, they are very supportive of trying to accommodate you for second and third year housing if that's what you'd like to do. Um, but as for my private renting kind of experience, it's pretty much the same as Rohini. Um, there is a lot of support that the university gives you. Um, and I think one of the good things about doing a law degree is that obviously you get your, your contract law elements in there, your land law <laughs> elements. So you, you kind of get into your lawyer mode a little bit. Um, but again, I mean, it goes to say, like, if you're dealing with an estate agent, I think a lot of the estate agents kind of know that there are a lot of students who are looking to go into student properties so they are all supportive as well um so yeah i think it's a relatively straightforward um process as well um and you kind of you kind of learn a lot and you kind of do it by yourself really so yeah um okay so let's have a look uh are there good chances to work with the law firms I think that does, um, we do get kind of a, well, basically there's a careers and employability service. They can help you kind of find jobs like that as well and experience. And we've got, um, we get help from um, someone in the law, in the law school who kind of gives out weekly bulletins. We get emails um, about different opportunities out there. So work experiences, um, mini pupillages, which is where you go to court with a barrister and you kind of, just a shadow them um, so you do get some chance you do get opportunities to um, work in law fairs which is always good you do need experience as you go along I think it really does help um, and I'm not sure if anyone knows but we've also got the law clinic on our campus where you can um, work with solicitors on you know real life cases and help them as well so there's lots of different opportunities to get some experience Uh, did any of you do a year abroad? Sorry, can't help this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think any of us have, but um, I, I mean, I we do, know. I can, Sorry, Akash? Yeah. I was, I was going to say, I do know, as you were saying, some people that have done it, and the way it's set out is. Um, KLS, like but at the moment, they only offer the um, uh, study abroad option, and um, that's divided into two nice um, segments of European legal studies and international legal studies. So the European consists of universities in Europe, obviously Austria and France, etc. And then whereas international is more. It's Canada based in Hong Kong and it's through the Eras Erasmus program, which is a sort of like union between universities across the world. And they basically seek out university students from other universities. And then you sort of through the university, you can apply to um, those universities and the place that those universities offer. So I do know some people that have gone down that route. And I say a nice thing about the law school is that um, because um, we're doing a qualifying law degree and all the modules we do anyway are core modules, you always have the option to decide, right, I'm doing a straight law degree in first year, but, oh, I, I do like the sound of maybe going abroad to study. Uh, I know people that went to the law school in the beginning of the second year and managed to get their course changed from the straight law degree to the European or to the international so they could have that chance to study so it's not in concrete on which sort of path of law you go towards you can change your um, degree in some circumstances but yeah that's something good about it um okay we've got loads of questions let's see how many, how many we can get through <laughs> um yeah, okay. So what is it? So somebody said they're going to be first year uh, law student. What is it like to be a law student? And how, how, and how can you engage with everyone? Um, um, I, oh, sorry, go on. Go on. <laughs> um, for first mm -hmm. year, um, I think you have 
quite a lot of opportunities to um, engage with lots of different people, mainly through your seminars, I guess, because um, for each subject, so normally you'll do four subjects in the term, um, and for each one you'll have a couple of lectures each week and one seminar for each subject a week. And so your groups for each seminar will be different. So, um, and because you're working quite closely with them, because it's around 10 to 15 people, I think, um, you get to talk and engage with them um, quite a lot. And also we have a few different law, um, student law societies on campus. So if you join them, depending on if you know you want to become a solicitor or barrister, um, there's ones for different international students as well. So you could join those two to um, kind of get to know people um, who have want to go into the same kind of path of law as you do. Um, so there are quite a lot of opportunities. I was also just going to um, add um, that obviously if you are deciding to kind of stay on campus in your first year, you'll obviously get to engage with not necessarily just law students, you'll probably be living with people who are doing law um, who, or who might be doing law, um, as well as other students who are also in their first year. Uh, so that's also just a nice way to engage and I found from my experience that it was friends of friends who were studying law and that's how we kind of met and then you kind of decide to go to your le your first lecture together and then you kind of meet people in the lectures and you're all on, like you're all kind of in the same boat so um it's kind of you'll find your way around it i think like rohini said in seminars as well that was kind of one of the main places i think i made my friends in first year um and then obviously like you that's an ongoing process like for a second year and third year you do different modules so you'll be in different groups you'll meet different people so um, it's an ongoing process, but um, you'll find it easy enough to uh, kind of engage, I think. Um, somebody's asked, how do you take notes? <laughs> I think uh, most, I take mine handwritten, but I know lots of people type them as well. And I kind of tried both <laughs> in first year to see, but I think for me personally, I don't kind of, if I'm typing it all out, I don't really engage in with it properly. Whereas when, because taking writing out normally takes longer, I have to think about it a bit more and trying to make sure I understand the main key point and write that, that down. So I'd say first year is a good time to try out different things and figure out what's good for you um, for like learning and revising as well, because then by second year you'll have it down and be able to do really well. So. Yeah, mine, uh, if I did handwriting, I don't think I'd be able to read my own writing. <laughs> my writing's not the best. And plus, if you're in a lecture, sometimes they tend to talk a little bit fast and mm -hmm. I won't be able to finish my sentence. And I'm like, oh my God, what was I going to write? So just typing, my hands are a bit quicker like that. So um, typing, yeah, and then obviously, I think just highlighting the key information, the key kind of legal terms um, that you might need to remember. And yeah, so for seminars, which if no one knows, it's kind of, it's smaller than a lecture. Um, you can have around maybe like 10 to 20 people in it, sometimes 20 max, I wouldn't really say more than that. Um, and you kind of condense all the information and discuss it and talk over and you'll get seminar questions beforehand that you need to prepare for so I would use my lecture notes that I've made um, to help me answer the seminar questions and I would say in, I'll write it in my own words so um, it would help me to digest the information and understand it um, and then I've got two sets of notes so I've got notes from the lecture and then my own notes that I've made from like textbooks and what I remember and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Just to yeah. add on to that quickly, yeah, just to add an, on to that quickly, um, I think as um, Raheem learning and revising, I feel like you definitely write in your notes out that the lecturer's always emphasizing is the fact that you don't want to suddenly lose like your like sort of like muscle memory in your hands because when it comes to the exams, you have to write like you have two, three hours sometimes at exams. You have to write so quickly and your hands can cramp, so you do definitely need to keep it going. But I also found that type of notes is so much, it's a good way to organize your thoughts and a lot clearer because I found when I read through my notes that I did lectures, 
it all like uh, scribbles and like can barely like decipher them. So I feel like one useful thing that uh, potentially you could do is sometimes write your notes in lectures and then when you go to do your seminar prep, you can look back at those notes and then you can take into your actual seminar notes. So you sort of embed the both of them there and that way you sort of get the best of both worlds with your notes. I was just gonna add actually, just to kind of, yeah. in case you don't know, um, lectures are also recorded so if you find that you are a handwriter and you can't keep up like you know like like with Neha as well like I've always found that if I am trying to write I kind of forget what was being said because it does go a bit fast paced so um if you do want to lectures are recorded and you can always go back to it and add to your notes or re-listen and redo them so that's also an option um so a really interesting question we've got from Jeremy actually uh do you, does anyone know how the law course will be structured next year because of the coronavirus Uh, so I think the university currently have said that they're going to try and do blended learning. So there's going to be online teaching, so online lectures and stuff, and then some stuff in person. But um, obviously that's all subject to change depending on what happens. Um, but the university website does have a page on all of the updates because of COVID-19. So I'd suggest looking at that to see if there are any changes but I think the current plan is that um, you should be able to do most of it online but some things in person like if you have any speakings or things like that they'll try and arrange that but perhaps later in the year depending on what happens. I think Akash and I have that to look forward to next yeah. year with the rest of you guys that are listening. Um, I don't know it'll be, it'll be I... an interesting way of doing things I think. Yeah, but I also feel like it won't be too discomforting, especially for the fact, like you were saying, how lectures are recorded. Um, mm. I found that I sort of did a mixture of times when I, I would look, look at my lectures online. So that won't be too uh, different because of the way you hear the lecture. Lecture will still be in the same quality as you would be in the lecture theatre. And um, there's also sort of been on the page talks of how seminars can potentially be uh, distanced in uh, lecture theatres so the university is doing online features but through like uh, government guidelines you'll still have that sort of personal experience of talking to people in real life so yeah I feel like it's something that the university is working its best forward it's sort of like as um they haven't gone through something like this before but it's something which will deliver that same quality that a KLS law degree offers yeah and i think as well um all of us we did kind of seminars online for the last couple of months of our of this year so i think from our experience we could say that even if they are held online um kind of in a similar format to how we're doing this it still works out quite well kind of because everyone can still have a discussion through the seminar and you still um get a lot out of it so um i think even if things do happen online we've found that it hasn't been too bad so you don't lose out very much on what you're learning um so if we move on to the next one i guess um uh, somebody's asked uh, again about studying abroad um and i suppose we've kind of already covered that but i just wanted to add actually i've just remembered that um i'm sure by now you've all probably selected what kind of course you're doing but um obviously kent as well does have um i think it's called like international legal studies or european legal studies so i think those from my knowledge anyway because i do a straight law degree but um from my knowledge i think those ones do offer a kind of a year abroad um a couple of years down the line um so i know that's kind of just something to add on from what we've already said about uh, studying abroad um okay with regards to the next question phoebe's asked how much reading do you have to do with law mm -hmm. a lot, Quite a, lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of reading you've got to read articles cases don't want to scare anyone but sometimes cases can be about 40 pages long um it is yeah it, it's a lot of reading but i mean if you find it interesting then it's not too, it's not too bad um but yeah you have to make sure you've got your best highlighters and just sometimes you've got to sit there and you know read a lot of stuff but it's worth it in the end and the lecturers do um kind of help you out with 
tackling all the reading as well, kind of how to read smartly. Um, so um, yeah, I think even though it seems daunting at first, you will kind of pick up the technique on how to read and you'll become faster and better at it as well. So mm -hmm. I think that you do have to go in with the mindset that you are prepared to read those 40 pages. <laughs> Yeah, and um, the way sort of sorry, the way that readings are sort of organised, you'll find that introductions and conclusions sort of concisely set out what entire articles are about. So as Rahili was saying, it's sort of that smart reading. It sort of gives you pointers to look out, for. and um, it, it's, it gets easier, a lot more easier as you do it. It's not as daunting as you would think it is. Yeah, I'm just going to add on. Sorry, a question from Jade because um, she said it's. For slow readers, what are the best tips to get through books? I would probably say I'm, I'm a slow reader, so I can relate to you on mm -hmm. that. Um, sometimes I've got to read something five times just for it to get to understand it or get into my head, but that's completely fine. Um, some people can read it and then they, suddenly they understand it. I'm definitely not one of them. But I would say for that, go at your own pace and don't force yourself to kind of understand the information because you'll just delay the process even more sometimes you've got to come back to it a few days later or ne another day and then you'll suddenly be like okay I understand this now I know what it means and at the beginning especially um you won't understand some legal terms but you will get there and you'll start familiarizing yourself with it a lot more but I would say take it in chunks don't sometimes I would sit there with a 40 page case and be like oh my god I have to you know how long is this going to take me and it would take me a long time but what I do now is I separate it so first i would read the facts of the judge of the case so uh, i'll read about what it's about what's happening in the case i'll take a break um come back to it and then read the issue so what were the judges trying to answer and then take another break and then come back to the judgment and see what the the result was so um if you kind of just you know immerse yourself into a long case like that or an article even you will get overwhelmed um, so definitely take breaks if you're a slow reader like me. Um, okay, so uh, quickly moving on. Uh, we've got a question from Rose asking, do you think getting a first is very hard? I think at first it probably seems like impossible when you do your first assessments and get them back and the grades aren't really what you're expecting, but I think um, with the help of your seminar leaders and your lecturers, um, you can definitely build up and get there. Like you, you do get a lot of support um, for every assessment that you submit. Um, you get feedback on um, what you wrote and they'll, a lot of the times that feedback is the most helpful thing for you to improve on your mark. Um, but there's also, I think, before every kind of assessment that we had in first year, we had a whole lecture on how to do it, what kind of things you need to be doing to get the higher marks, um, some examples in some cases of what higher marks look like. So I think um, definitely you can't expect it from the beginning, but you can definitely work up to it. I think also one of the reasons why it seems so daunting is because people sort of get their heads sort of wrapped around it and they sort of overthink it because getting a first in an essay it doesn't necessarily mean that you know all the content and that you spill all the content onto one essay because if you do that you're not you'll be lucky to get a 2-1 it's all about the way that the law school teaches you is how to organize your thoughts and your ideas effectively and to create arguments that are convincing and something that's really helpful is the Kent Law School sort of have a marking criteria that they post on Moodle and that it sets out how, how a first essay differs from a 2-1 essay and it's sort of like the critical analysis that the Kent Law School really like emphasises and it's sort of you're writing about a certain subject of the law and then you take a step back and you try and look at the whole, whole the wider picture and say but why is that there? Is that effective? And that's sort of what the markers really want to see is that you're engaged with the material and you sort of question it and that you sort of like put it against the rule of law. And uh, that's something that can really help boost your marks there. 
Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to add as well, like, you guys have probably heard my experience with the start of first year compared to, you know, the further on down the line. But when I started off, um, it kind of goes back to, to law as well. Like, I, um, at A-level, I thought doing law at A-level would probably get me the you know, the first from the first assignment I did, and that just wasn't the case. Uh, and like Akasha said, obviously Kent is a critical law school and critical analysis is definitely something that you have to keep working uh, working on. And I know that's something 100% I have to keep doing. Um, so just because, again, going back to this topic of, have, oh, I didn't do law, will I be disadvantaged? Not at all. Um, I kind of just did it for the interest, um, but obviously there's not there's no kind of, I don't think there's a, a correlation that if you did do law, you're going to get first um, because we'll see that that's not how, how I started off. So I don't know, hopefully that helps. Um, okay, so um, another really, really interesting question we've got um, is currently there's a lot of uh, outcry about the treatment of black lives in the system. What does Kent do to aid diversity and support minorities? Um, well, I think just generally um, our university is very diverse. A lot of the students are international students. So um, I always give the example that I remember I had a seminar where if there were about 15 of us, um, only three of us were from the UK. And even then, like I'm Indian origin, um, but like everyone else was from other countries. And I think it's really great to have that atmosphere to learn in because you just you have so much opportunity to learn them to learn about other people and also it really helps when you're um studying about something to know kind of how other countries do it um so i think it is very diverse um yeah uh, i feel like also like just sort of be to like looking on the screen right now all of us are from sort of ethnic backgrounds of somewhat or another and it's just sort of the fact that Kent Law School, it's like something that I haven't really thought about properly until obviously the BLM movement has sort of sparked up. But I'd say being at university is just such a diverse university with international students and European students. Um, it just feels like there is, there's just a quality there. And I've sort of never thought, oh, based on the color of my skin that I'm not gonna get an opportunity. Like that wasn't the case being at university it's just the opportunity is there and I'm interested in it and we go after it and yeah if I don't get it it's not going to be it's going to be based on something else and um usually just going after it straight away and um yeah you can go and get it yeah, yeah, just no, gonna... just gonna... sorry, sorry go on Karen. go on I'm just going to add on um also throughout the year I've noticed a lot since studying that there's always some sort of form of discussion and talks going on in our university and we get so many emails about you know promoting you know d uh, different individuals from different countries different colors everyone to to you know could not, not be afraid of going into law and I understand that it obviously it's quite a you know male white dominated uh, industry but we have so many people come on um, from BME um, backgrounds and supporting, you know, everyone to to go for it and to, um, you know, try the try and uh, get involved and not to be afraid and stuff like that. So the university is always um, promoting that discussion and getting people involved, um, and instead of not just ignoring the matter, which I think is really important and something that I I really respect uh, the University of Kent for. I was just going to add really, really quickly before we move on. Um, there, there's loads of societies and stuff you, you can join. And one example that comes to mind is um, uh, the Holy Festival, the Hindu festival, where you kind of throw colours and stuff at people. Um, and that was one of the events that I really, really enjoyed because you just get loads of people from different communities coming together. And I think that's just kind of one really bright example of demonstrating just how diverse the university is and like how, how you're able to meet so many different people and get on. So um, I think... I think we're good there. So uh, swiftly moving on. Um, from the people you know doing law, do many people not want to go down the lawyer route? I would say from what I've heard is sort of half and half. I think a lot of people start studying law um, with the hope of being a, a solicitor or barrister. And then I do think some of them get disheartened just because they soon to, they realise that it's quite competitive, but I do think if you 
if it's something that you really do want to do, if you want to be a solicitor and if you've had these is that that goal from you know the beginning, then definitely go for it. Um, even if you don't want to be a solicitor or a barrister and you want to study law, you know, studying a law degree can open your opportunities a lot. Um, it's not specifically for people who want to become a lawyer. So um, I would say from what I've seen, it's quite half and half, really. I think as well in third year that they, uh, they sort of have a alternative careers like fair uh, with the law students. And that's something that I personally that I'd like to go and see because the, um, the way things work at KLS is that you can have your options open. So you can have that sort of, I, I could go down the solicitor route, uh, continuing doing my studies and my experience, but there's also different areas that I can delve into. And that's one of the great things I earned a degree from the Kent Law School, is that it's just <clears throat> sort of recognised for that critical analysis and it's renowned and that through a law degree, you can go through different opportunities and get them. Uh, Okie dokie, let's, uh, we've got some, some time left. Let's have a look. Um, okay, one of the questions. Uh, why is second year seen as more intense? What tips would you give to students going into a law undergraduate degree? Um, I'll answer that since I made that statement. <laughs> second year was more intense for me because I think the modules that we studied weren't necessarily for, I, I mean, I didn't really enjoy them particularly, that's just for me. Third year, thankfully, you get to choose all your own modules. Um, so that's why I've enjoyed third year a lot more. Second year, we did some modules, I know you guys have just done them, like equity, equity and trusts, um, land law, stuff like that. So it's a little bit more tricky and a bit more intense. And sometimes it was a bit hard for me to get my head around, but, these are the core modules that you have to study in order to have a qualified law degree so you're going to have to get through it eventually um and i did but it was just it was a lot for me because i think first year it was easier for me and then the, i think i think there would be i think for me there was a, more of a jump between first year and second year than there was from a level to first year if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, okay, wow. And then suddenly your second year obviously counts a lot more. It's 40% towards your final de uh, degree. So you suddenly get that pressure anyways. Um, but yeah, my contact hours were a little bit more. So it was kind of just getting into your degree a bit more in depth and kind of getting into the nitty gritties really, which is why it was a bit more stressful, but we've got so much support um, and everyone's going through it. So all the students all the time, you know, you're discussing about, oh, what did you do for this? So your assignments and talking and stuff like that. So you're not alone. Um, but it's just, yeah, for me, that was one of the most challenging years, but it's definitely doable. So I don't want to put anyone off by saying that. <laughs> um, I think this kind of links a little bit closely to, um, there's a couple of questions actually on whether or not the modules are kind of coursework based or um, exam based. So I don't know, maybe we can discuss a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so I think for, for first year, you have around three exams and then second year, I think you guys had four, right? Um, yeah. And then for your third year, you can kind of pick how much, um, whether you want to do more exams or more essays. But I'd say for first and second year, it was kind of 50-50 on the coursework and exam. Um, like how much they contribute um, to your mark. So I feel like you can kind of um, figure out where where your strengths lie. So if you prefer doing coursework, doing the essays, um, you could pick more modules based on that. Or if you're more comfortable with the exams, then you can pick it that way. Um, but I think you do get support for both kinds of assessment. Um, and yeah. Um. Like you talked about support, um, another really interesting question that I've just noted um, is how are you being supported by lecturers and tutors during lockdown? Um, for example, if you need help or have a question. Um, I think I'll start off with this actually. Um, we obviously had to adapt to exams um, online this time round. Um, and obviously that just meant kind of typing them up and submitting them. Um, and I know that we'd been awaiting, uh, Akash, we'd been waiting for our taught law um, problem questions to come back to us. So we wanted that feedback uh, in time before we sat our exam. Um, and I think one thing that kind of was, has been really helpful is that our seminar leaders um, kind of 
they were willing to be on their emails all the time and you know support you and give you additional feedback to the feedback we'd already been given um from our problem questions so i suppose this is this is an unprecedented time for everyone so it's students and and tutors as well so everybody's always there kind of on hand ready to support you uh, and i know just kind of away from exams as well one thing i've been doing is emailing um lecturers or tutors that I've come across already kind of asking about my next year like how, I'm, how I can improve certain skills um, so they're always willing to help you and I suppose that's why they're there so um, they are always very supportive so I don't know how your experiences have come with that guys. Yeah I've, I've had good experiences in my after my second year exam some of them didn't go as well and um, during the beginning of my third year I went to the tutors for those subjects and um, they like went through my exam answers and gave me feedback specifically on them. So as long as, like, as if you ask, they're not most of the time very willing to help you out. So it's just a case of you asking them. And also um, I'll mention that we do have um, academic advisors um, while you're going through university. So um, each year you'll have um, an academic advisor which is a staff member in your school so for you guys it will be some, a member of Kent Law School you might have been taught by them or not um, and they'll kind of you have to meet them I think once a term and they'll also check in with you so even if you're not like you maybe don't know who to ask for help um, you can always go to them or when you have those meetings you can bring it up to them that maybe you're struggling with something and they can help direct you in the right place or um, they if you just feel comfortable talking to them then they'll help you with whatever they can so I feel like there is a lot of support um, in terms of that as well. Um, <clears throat> so one of the other questions somebody's asked um, does it help to form study groups with other law students? um i definitely say it does my one wasn't even sort of like it wasn't intentional it was just the fact that um my mate who i've i've been sitting next to him uh in my lectures basically for the entire first few years we always sit together and it's just it's just become this sort of routine and something that we first did with each other was that we would uh at first because with uh, seminar readings they are uh, they do seem a bit daunting at first and sort of discussing the questions and the ideas so what we would do uh, the university library has a really good function where you could book study rooms uh, so what we did was we would go together and we would do our uh, seminar sort of readings and then we could discuss our ideas together and that really like solidified what we were doing and it's really like warming when you sort of have an answer and you're not sure if it's completely correct but when they sort of have a similar answer and they're, they're along the same lines then it really sort of solidifies your confidence so I'd say you, you, sh you should be careful with studying groups because there's also the fact that you don't want to get too similar in your sort of ideas and whether facts you'll come up with your essays and, um, and type them and submit them the university uses a really advanced software called Termitin on when you submit your um, essays and they can sort of detect the similarities in essays so I'd say you, you would want to do the exact same work as people in studying groups but for discussing ideas and getting help on questions they're really your peers are really a go-to for that and it's quite helpful because you're on the same wavelength as them. Um, okay so uh, are societies free to join or do you need to pay? I don't know, I'm probably not best place. <laughs> I'm quite glad uh, you're not joining many this... societies. <laughs> um, I think for um, law students, all of the different law societies are free to join. Um, and then other societies normally pay like five pounds or 10 pounds or something to join. Um, some of the societies and the sports societies are more expensive yeah. um, because of the equipment and everything like that. And also sometimes you have to get gym memberships. So, um, but most, the majority of them are, I think, not that expensive. So, and you do get quite a lot of free sessions at the beginning of the year um, mm. so that you can try out everything first and see what you want to commit to and, you know, pay money for. But 
the law societies are all free so all the different events and things they do you can just go along to yeah something i was notified of as well when i did i used to do rowing at the university and uh, some of the treasure was telling us was that kent union is there to support you uh, so if you have struggles with money or financial these they're really your go-to to sort of um, get that support and you can go talk to them and then they can offer you grants sometimes for different sports and uh, societies but usually a lot of them are fairly reasonable and they can last like the whole year so it's definitely worth worth it great stuff um okay <clears throat> i think we probably commonly get asked questions like this um but why would you choose kent compared to another university for example I suppose whilst we can't, we're not going to obviously say anything bad about the universities because we don't go there, we don't know. So, um, but I suppose we could say, I mean, one thing that I think kind of really stands out about Kent Law School is obviously the use of the Kent Law Clinic um, and that building, I'm not too sure if you guys have seen it, but the Wigada building is where the bottom part is obviously where the law clinic is. Um, and then upstairs is where the sort of mooting cha chamber is. Um, and I think that's kind of one thing that really drew me to, to sort of Kent Law School. Um, I don't know about you guys. What about you? Yeah, I was going to say the, um, I think when I first, I saw quite a few universities before I uh, chose which one I wanted to go to. And first of all, just the campus of Kent, it was quite unique to other universities. Um, and it's definitely, it was definitely the kind of campus that I was looking for. And the people were really friendly. So I just kind of felt at home already. Um, also, the like you said, um, Hella, the Kent Law Clinic was kind of the main reason um, why I chose Kent. And now looking back at it, Kent Law Clinic has been the highlight of my whole experience. I've gained a lot of experience um, from working in the Kent Law Clinic. You know, I've, had to, I've been able to uh, have my own clients and actually work with them and, you know, go to court. And I've been able to experience stuff that I don't think I would have maybe experienced at many other universities. Yeah. So um, it's definitely a highlight. And if someone is looking for work experience um, within kind of the legal sector alongside their studies, um, do look into the Kent Law Clinic, definitely. Um, okay, so we've got a couple of minutes left. Maybe we can maybe try and squeeze in two more maybe. Um, so there's been quite a lot of questions I think that we've had about training contracts and like work experience, how easy is it to secure those? Um, I don't know who wants to kind of, does anyone have any personal experience with that? Um, well I'm in my third, I'll, I'll start it off because I'm obviously at the moment looking for a training contract, I'm in my third year. Um, so I it's not easy it's definitely not easy it is difficult um there's obviously you have to think when you graduate there's so many of you i mean in my year there was like 400 plus people we've all suddenly got a law degree and we're all looking for a training contract so it, there's not that many out there to give um so the competition is high but the university does support you there's so many different workshops to improve your cv um, practice interviews um, we have a law fair that comes every year the kent law fair where loads of different um, law firms come with a stand and they talk to you about what their training contract offers and you get to network there's so many networking networking opportunities um, i've been to so many different uh, firms some in kent i've been to margate some in london so the university does help you out a lot um it's obviously down to your own research as well but like i said i think what everyone would kind of tell you is get as much experience as you can as you go along which it is difficult um but i would usually do mine in the summer so for example like i said about the weekly email we get about experiences um when i was when i was thinking about being a barrister we got offered a lot of different pupillages so mini pupillages um where you go to the where you go to a court with a barrister and I had I got to do that in the summer so I was I was free from my studies so it's not like you can only uh, get those experiences during study time they're, they're always available um but yeah I would definitely say do your research and look at the different firms that you want to work for don't necessarily think that you're um because you can't apply to every firm out there so look at what suits you best, whether you want a regional firm or a city firm and talk to your careers advisor at university. They'll help you and guide you along the process. They'll read your applications for you. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of help with that. Um, I suppose 
this might be a nice one to kind of end it off with. Um, I know this sounds random, but what is the best laptop for law? <laughs> I really like that. Um, I mean, when I started in my first year, I literally went into Wolf Lecture Theatre, which is a massive lecture theatre. You'll probably commonly find that your lectures will be in there just because of how many law students there are. And you turn around and all you see is MacBooks everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> MacBooks everywhere. And I'm just going to be the first to say that I am sitting um, with a Microsoft Surface laptop, not a Mac, uh, and Zooming you all today. So that's obviously great if you've got one but you, there's no by all means you don't need one um and i know like it's quite nice it kind of puts you in the mood you know i'm going to university but obviously if um that's not kind of something that you're willing to get that's fine people have loads of different laptops um and they all do the job which is the important thing uh, as long as you know you've got your storage and your microsoft word or whatever it might be um i think you're, you're good to go so um yeah, yeah. Um, All I would say is that make sure you get a laptop with like a decently big screen because you will do a lot of your reading probably on your laptop rather than printing it all out. So definitely have that. And I also have a Surface laptop. So one thing I found handy was you can have it like a tablet and turn it around so you can like read it as a page. So um, definitely keep in mind like when if you're buying a laptop that you need to read a lot on there so make sure the screen is good for you <laughs> but other than that yeah you don't need any specific laptop um, yeah. yeah you don't need to I was gonna say in my uh, first year I had a Lenovo that I had used since A levels and like AS and it was breaking in the middle of my seminars and like the screw was coming out and I was like trying to close it together and it's a bit embarrassing because like you said there's so many people with their like MacBooks and I'm saying they're like okay this is gonna really embarrassing but it doesn't make a difference I mean it didn't affect my grade or anything like that I mean I've upgraded now but <laughs> back then mm. it was it doesn't make a difference so don't worry there's definitely not even a shortage of PCs on campus, considering that the amount of PCs in the library and there's also distinct study hubs across campus. There's, um, there's definitely not a shortage of if you didn't have a laptop, you're not going on a computer. And also, I know the library has the, the laptop booths that you can rent uh, laptops from. So, yeah. Okay, well, I think we'll probably leave it there, guys. Um, so, no, thank you very much to everybody that's kind of joined in, in the webinar today. We really hope, as always, that we've been able to kind of answer some of your questions. Uh, and obviously, we apologise if we can get through all of them, because obviously time just flies by. Um, but yeah, send, keep sending through your questions. We like it when you're curious. So keep sending through your questions. Um, if you've got admissions questions that we might not necessarily have been able to answer, send them through to Daniel Lee. Um, all this information can be found on the website. Um, if you are sort of concerned about coronavirus, that kind of thing, again, like Rachel said earlier, all this information is on the website. Just type in Kent, University of Kent Coronavirus uh, and everything should come up. Um, we do hope to have more Instagram lives and things like that for you soon. Um, and obviously, um, just get involved with as much as you can during this time and stay safe so those, that's it from us guys i think so thank you thanks guys bye cheers bye